What? I won't cuss because <laughs> because I I, I, I could. I, I just need everybody to just take a second and pause and listen. You guys are way, way mature for how old you are. Way mature. And, and I say this because there are so many people. I know a lot of couples that are still trying to figure out the balance between what a real husband and what a real wife should look like. They're trying to figure out what helps them feel love and what they, how they can give love. Listen, go back and replay. I have to say this. There's a couple of times I'm looking to my left. It's not because I'm bored. It's because I'm looking at both of them talk and I'm being intrigued by how they're talking and I'm staring at them. I'm like, Oh crap guys. Do you listen to all the gems they just dropped? They recognize self, they self recognize first where they each had their own issues. But it wasn't until they got further along in life and further, further along in their marriage that they could actually recognize and say, I'm being selfish here. I am being selfish here. I am more thinking about myself than I am thinking about this communion that we have. Look, the scriptures teach us. When two get together, they leave everything else. That's it, mm -hmm. right? When I was a child, I think as a child, I act as a child. Mm -hmm. I behaved as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Mm -hmm. Becoming a man isn't when you get married. Becoming is a man when you have children. Becoming a man or a woman, and we can do both, is when you actually recognize things that you want to change. And are intentional about it. You said this a couple of times. You hinted on it. When you both became intentional about we want our marriage to work regardless of whatever. And I, I, we could have a whole other session on everybody injecting. You should leave. You have every right to leave. Mm -hmm. All the naysayers. Everybody, everybody who's got, a, let me give you some advice. Let me give you some advice, right? Everybody's yeah. going to say that. Yeah. Your advice is about as good as the advice that I walk over. It's just crap. That's all it is. Because my advice, people ask me, what's my advice? I don't have an advice. Because my advice, it would be for how it works for me in my marriage. It's not going to work for you guys. You have to, like you said, you have to figure this out. You have to figure this out. Good dog. This is so freaking good. I won't say hey, One thing I just want to talk so about. Good. One thing I want to talk about with the listeners, you guys are maybe listening and saying, well, that was years ago. That's great. But let me tell you something that happened last week. So the last week we actually had two strong conversations it happened thursday and friday i think it was two days back to back and i was laying there in bed and i was so upset and then i just felt my heart closing up and i realized that the main and this is everyone may have just missed it but i realized that the reason why that both of those conversations that happened was because i was letting the stress and the the situations of life dictate my response mm -hmm. instead of me dictating my response and that in that moment as i told her i just leaned over to her and i said i'm sorry and she said for what and i told her i said because i'm allowing everything else to push me into a place of of being a recluse and and hiding away again i said to hide behind walls i was building walls because of the pain of life in the moment this was last week the only reason we can sit here and be lovey-dovey and all that stuff is because I realized why were we here? So, and even, if, even the, the night before on that Thursday, I was still putting the blame off on her while she just doesn't hear me. She doesn't understand. She doesn't, she doesn't, but what part did I play? And when I started thinking about it rapidly in this moment on Friday night, after our discussion, I realized that it was because of my heart posture, the motives of my heart. And that was when I went and apologized and now we've had a great marriage again. That was our first communication breakdown in years. And that was because I closed myself off, not because the communication was bad. So if you're walking through a season that your communication doesn't make sense, you guys need to check your hearts. And the thing is, there's a couple of things that I just thought of while you were talking. Our great marriage doesn't mean we don't disagree. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean we don't have afternoons where we don't talk to each other. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean I don't snap at him and he doesn't come at me like these things still happen all the time it's about how quickly 
not even that we forgive, but how quickly, how quickly that we apologize. Like we apologize so quickly at this point in time that it's like, I'm, I'm sorry that what I, and it's not the apology. It's like, I'm sorry that you got hurt by what I said. Cause then you're putting it on them still. It's not a real apology. apology let's be honest. It's <laughs> an apology of, I'm sorry that what I said came out the wrong way, wrong, wrongly, not wrongly, wrong, goodness. It came out in a way. It came out in you. a way, not that hurt you, mm. that I didn't intend to for it to come. Like, I did not intend. Like, at this point, you're not even saying, like, I did it wrong. I did it wrong on purpose. Or it's your fault. You're saying, this is not what I intended at all. I did not intend for you to be hurt by what I said. I intended for it to ha- for this, this, and this to happen. And I think also the other thing that I've really just been thinking on for the past few minutes is the fact that for years, like I didn't pray for this. And then six months later, our marriage was this way. Mm -mm. I prayed from the beginning of our relationship to have the marriage we have today. And nothing happened for years, for years. And now it's the one thing that whenever everything else is going crappy, I can remember this is a miracle. No matter what's going on, I'm walking in a miracle. No matter what is happening, our house, what we're walking in every day, how we're walking out life together is a miracle. Yeah, and I just, I honor, there was a a moment in time when it was three years of intentional, her praying heaven down for me, whether you believe or you don't, that for her, she prayed every single day that I would be the godly husband that she had prayed that she wanted, that I would lead the family instead of being a, I would be the head and not the tail. Mm-hmm. And yeah. she prayed for that for three years. This was not three minutes. This was not three days. This was not three months. This was three years that she prayed for this. And it didn't happen until three years ago. Interesting. There's another three. It didn't happen until 2020 when I left that job. That's when the, that's when everything flipped for us. But that was that moment that I want people to understand that it was not immediate. It took so much time. It took so much of her praying. It took so much of her leading. I, women, don't be afraid to lead your house. My, there's people close to me that say, I just wish that he would, he would just step up and take, take his play, take his mantle. I wish he would be the leader. It's like, but how do you lead him in this season? Because he, maybe he never had an example of how to lead. Oh, so good. But also, do you set him up to be the leader or do you try to be the leader? Do you respect him? Do you honor him? All the work he does, everything that he puts into your family, even if, there's only 5% of the time that he's actually doing something that's respect worthy. Are you respecting the few things that he is doing right now? Because men don't need lovey dovey. Most of the time they want to know that they're respected Mm. that in their house, they're honored and that their wife is saying would, would stand up for them. That's good. Yeah. (laughs) Holy crap. This is a master course. You could package this up. You could sell this as a master course. What what you're learning, guys, what you're learning across the, the U, U.S., across the globe, what you're learning is two people have just said enough is enough. I love what you said, and I'm going to tell this. You're breaking cycles. You're breaking patterns that are traditional things that you have had examples in your life, people in your life, this is how it's always been. And you're now stepping up and saying, we no longer will allow the actions of others that had a, it may be in their best interest. They were trying to teach me something, but we no longer will allow the influences of negativity dictate how we are going to run our family. I love that breaking the cycle. Mm -hmm. It stops with me. I recognize this is where I suck. This is where I'm horrible. This is where I'm actually going to be way better. Man, that is so good. 
Dang. We there's a whole nother. I mean, we could keep we keep going. We could, but Don't, but yeah. but we could, we could totally. There's so many other things. My brain has seriously spun off into multiple questions. I need I want to ask this question because you guys have brought it up a couple of times. How how have now you guys recognized your calling in life? What what is that taking you in opportunities? Whether it's business, whether it's you know de- personal development, whether it's helping others. Where now that you guys are in a space where you know who you are, how has that now shaped and moved you into other ventures? I feel like I know who I am, but I don't hold on to anything too tightly anymore. And that's not uh, that's not like a seed of bitterness. That's not me expecting things not to work out, but that's me sitting here saying, if if I'm not in control, then I can sit here and actually be still whenever I'm told to, when I feel like I'm told to. I can spend time with my son, even whenever I feel like I should be working. We can go spend a quality day together. We We have freedom to do that. But when we talk about calling, it's not as much you're you're not walking into like it's not like this aha moment. I feel like it's something that you end up in whenever you're walking in obedience. Like to me, my calling is not necessarily business. My calling is actually to help marriages. And right now what that looks like is just telling my story. I have to learn tools to be able to say, this is how you do it differently. I can tell you my experience and hope that that inspires you. But can I sit you down and have a conversation with you and fix all your problems? Probably not. But realizing that and realizing that my knowledge is not at the place that can help people, but also realizing that I'm on at least on the journey and I at least understand that I'm on my way, I'm on my way to the destination. That's what I feel like to me is like the calling in this season. Yeah. And the, what I'm about to say is also for you is oh gosh, the so often we want to wait till we get on top of the mountain to turn around and try to help the people below us. But the thing is, is that if we're all on the same journey, it's about just being one step ahead. If I'm one step ahead, I can turn around and tell you, hey, watch out for that stick. Watch out for the thorns. Mm -hmm. Watch out for the snake that's right there in the grass. I can tell you what I've walked through already. And that is what a true calling looks like. It's not necessarily I'm called to paint. So many times people box themselves in. It's like maybe you're not called to paint. Maybe that's just an outlet that you're really good at and you've labeled it as that your calling because that's where you're comfortable. That's where you feel good at. The thing is, is that business is one of them where I feel that we are good in this space. Does that mean that's our calling? Maybe not. But what it is, is it is a structure. It actually is an infrastructure of things that people can can relate to and say, wow, I want to hear from them on business. And then so we give them what they want and we also give them what they need because, okay, you want to be a business owner. You want to go far in business. You want to start an e-commerce brand, whatever it is, but yet your heart's not right. You can't take care of your family. You're not even taking care of yourself. You're going to build this thing and it's going to destroy you. So the the same thing is just being one step ahead. So many times we have done this. I have done this. I'm sure people listening have done this where we disqualify ourselves because we don't have a certain level of success. We don't think, well, we haven't made $34 million in nine months. So there's no way I can talk to Cam. There's no way that there's anything he's going to get. There's nothing that I'm going to say to him that he's going to he's going to be like, oh, that's good. He's going to be like, oh, no, I did that 24 months ago. But the thing is, is we disqualify ourselves. And if we if even being really open, if we had disqualified ourselves because of your success, we wouldn't be on this podcast. So don't disqualify yourself from speaking to people just because they have a different kind of success than what you have. And I, I think that that is so integral because you may be wherever you are. You, you may be in a job. But you may be a manager instead of just being on the front line, but you started on the front line. So is do you think because you're a step ahead that you can turn around and say, hey, this is how I got here. Let me show you what I did and just help somebody else. 
because I'm sure if everyone listening is honest, they've had someone come along their path who just saw them, believed in them and said, hey, let me let me try to help you with what I've been through. And I think that that is what true calling is, is being willing to turn around and give back, no matter if that's finances, no matter if that's your time, no matter if that is your spiritual knowledge, no matter if that's your emotional knowledge, being willing to give back, because that is truly when you get to the mountaintops of life, that is what you're called to do. The mountaintops of life are not even for you. They're for other people to see that it's possible. Mm -hmm. What? What else do you want me to say? <laughs> what what else do you want me to say? There's nothing else. I I will say this. I want to I want to elaborate a little bit more on what you were saying, both of you. You know, just yesterday, oh well, was yes, no Sunday, Sunday. Um, I was having a call. I, met, uh, I saw my buddy. He was outside. I was walking my grandson. And we were talking, and it just so happened we were talking about you know listening to podcasts. And he goes, "Hey, he goes, I want you to know I, I love your podcast." I go. You do? He goes, yeah, man. I listen to it. I listen, I listen to all of them. Wow. He's a, it's very inspiring. And what he didn't know at that point was, I was like, man, I, I, I'm kind of getting burnt out. I'm, I'm kind of getting mm -hmm. tired of doing the bot. I'm, I'm really getting, you know, because you can oftentimes get caught up in the analytics and you know how many or how do you make a bigger presence. And I'm like, man, I'm just, I'm starting to get burnt out. I'm getting tired. I mean, I, I love doing it and listening to people and sharing stories, but I'm getting tired. And that little thing that he said to me was like, man, I've always said if one person listens and they are inspired, mm -hmm. that'll keep me going. And, and it was, it's super impactful. And you're right. Just because people have a ton of success doesn't mean they don't want to share that knowledge. Just because people have walked through the fire don't don't be afraid to go up and ask them. I will say this too. When you ask people for advice or ask them for help or ask them to teach you and learn, you better be ready for the answers they give you. You're mm -hmm. not going to like them. You're mm -hmm. you're not going to like them all the time. You you guys can say this and I'll say this. You don't want to be where we are. We don't want to be in this position. You don't want to be where you where where you're growing something. It is lonely. It you're tired, you're lonely. You're like I'm doing this all by myself. Being being at the top, of course, we'll say the top, right? Not the game, but just in your if you're building a business, you're the top level. It's it's lonely at the top. Yeah. It gets boring. You do the same thing over and over again. You get up Every the same day. time. You, yeah. you get up the same time. You work through the same process. You do the same things. You do this because you know it works. Most successful people will tell you they have a very boring life because it's the standards. It's the process and it is the, this is the, how it's done because I know this is going to create something magical. It's super boring. Some people ask me all the time, you like, I'm like, I love what I do, but it is super boring. It really is <laughs> cutting it, put post posting, you know, pushing it out, putting on the mediums, put pushing everything. It's like, it's, it's, it gets boring at times, but it takes one person, one person to say, I listen to you and thank you. So as you guys are all listening to this, it takes one person to reach out to yep. Brittany and Steven and say, thank you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for being open. Thank you for being transparent. It's never fun to open up the doors and, and let the cobwebs and say, here's all my dirt. Here it is. You want to see it? It's super hard. It's super difficult. And we thank both of you for being so open and so honest and so transparent on this podcast. Because I know it's not easy. I know it's hard, 100%. But the fact that you can inspire people because of where you have been and where you are going, you're going to, then people will just come flocking to you. That I know. Your calling in life is being manifested little by little. And God's going to keep saying, oh, no, oh, don't worry. You've been here before. You know what this pain is like. Mm -hmm. You'll get through it. No, you don't think so? Well, what happened? Remember this? And that's what happens, right? You recall things to our memory. Oh, I remember that. I remember that. Because God does not qualify the call he calls, right? He, no, sorry, yeah. I said that wrong. He doesn't, right? He, he qualifies the people. He doesn't yeah. call the qualified. He will qualify the call. Oh, yeah. He will yeah. open up. Open up your talents. And that's what he's doing. He's continuing to open talents as you guys are listening and seeing 
Man, this is so. Oh man, that was so good. <laughs> Dang, this is so good. That was for me. I mean, you did. Yes, that was for me too. And at, for those listening, he just dropped tons of gems. Yeah. You want to know how to be successful? Do the boring stuff a lot. Mm -hmm. That's it. You. The thing is, there's people in my life that they have shiny object syndrome. AI is the big one. Okay, so we got to master everything about AI, every single prompt ever. And it's like, or you want to know something that still works? Cold calling. You can actually still just cold call and make that work. Now, is that the most effective way? Maybe not. Is AI the future? Probably. Does that mean that you jumping on it now is going to make you wildly successful? There's actually a study that proves the pioneers are not the ones that are most successful. It's the people that follow after. Mm. Google was the seventh search engine. Not the first. Seventh. Apple was not the first phone. They were like the 13th. So does people want to be first they want to be the boss they want to jump on the the new hottest trend but that's actually not where most of the the, the success is made most of it is after seeing somebody else fall down a hundred times and saying oh i should probably watch out for that pothole well yeah. three more people just ran into the same cobwebs i should probably just walk around that and then once you do figure out what other people have done is doing the boring stuff over and over and seeing these brand new opportunities and say you know what that looks great and maybe I can implement that into my business, but I'm not going to change whole businesses because that looks better than what I got right now. Mm. It only looks better until you've been in it and you realize, oh, wait, I got to go learn the same prompts for AI over and over and <laughs> over. It's the same thing. No matter what business you're in, you've got to do the boring stuff again and again and again. Same thing with relationships. Where you want, If you want to have a great relationship, you have to do the boring stuff in the dark to build the relationship you want. It's not just business. It's also in your marriage. It's also in your spiritual walk. If you're somebody that's spiritual, going and getting your Bible every day, over and over and over and praying over. And it's and not always fun. And it's not always fun. And there's times you don't want to do it. And you don't get a revelation every time. You don't get a revelation. Yeah. And that's even in business. You don't want to. There's days you're like, man, this sucks. Mm -hmm. I've done this same. I've done this reach out strategy for the last two months and doesn't feel like anything's coming from it. But you know what? I'm getting calls booked, so there's got to be something there. So I'm going to do it over and over <laughs> until it until something breaks. Yeah. But people would people break before the thing actually breaks before the dam breaks. People break. So that's why I'm saying in the dark is where your character is built. Can you when you're under heat and under pressure, can you do the boring stuff over and over? Or do you see what you think is a glimmer of light and say, I'm jumping on that? And typically what ends up happening is that it's like an angler fish in the deep seas where they see this light and, and they jump on it and it ends up being the death of them in their business or in their marriage because they jump to the next best thing. Yeah. Instead of staying where they're supposed to be. Mm. <laughs> Do the boring I stuff, love. people. <laughs> Do the boring stuff. That's that's what it comes down to. Do the boring stuff. Oh man. All right. This is the part that I hate it's the end. But I got I got a few more questions before I actually get to the end. Yet. This is for both of you, Brittany. How we'll start with Steve. If you were to counsel anybody today, men, dads, um, people who've just been married, people who've gone through some rock, rocky, rocky parts, give us one or two principles that you can draw on that says, here's something that I did that worked for me. Let's see if it could work for you. I would say, given the situation, I'll use some of our hardest situations walking through the affair, uh, business getting shut down is my number one piece of advice is just don't quit. Don't quit because, and this is actually something that I've learned as I've learned more about the stock market. Most people, when do they sell? Not when it's good. They sell when it's bad and then they try to buy when it's good, which is the opposite of what you actually have to do. So the thing is, is what, most of the time they quit because it's hard. They get scared. And I understand, but you're never going to reap the rewards of that hard season if you quit in the middle of it. So my number one piece of advice, if you're walking through something that you feel like is going to take you out, one is it won't. And two is don't quit. You, you could be battling cancer in the hospital right now, don't quit. There's somebody there, there's somebody you may never meet that your story is going out to meet them right where they're at. And if you quit right now, it'll never touch them in the way that it needs to. 
So I promise you, the thing that's sent to take you out won't as long as you don't quit. So that's my mm. piece of advice. Brittany, my question, the same question, right? What advice would you give somebody? Well, let me be, I'm going to be more specific. I'm going to be really, real specific. How would you help people, women in particular, just say, forgive yourself and move on? And I'm not talking about the affair. I'm just talking about in general, women are so hard on themselves mm -hmm. on every aspect of life. I didn't do this. I didn't do it. And if you've got kids, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm not doing this. I'm spending time here. You said it, right? I need to spend time with, uh, I should be spending time with my son as opposed to being on business, yeah. vice versa. You it never, ever feel like you've done enough throughout the day. What advice can you give women across the world oh my gosh, on so just crazy. forgiving <laughs> themselves? Um, I don't even know if I would say forgive yourself as much as I would say ask for help mm. women we we don't know how to do that like even last night we had a conversation Stephen and I where we had set uh responsibilities for each other in one season and now our season has kind of changed and I was like Stephen I, I, now I didn't go about it the right way initially but once he asked, like, is this really what you want to get out of this? I was like, no, actually, what I want to get out of this is I'm having a really tough time. And this is a lot for me. And I just need you to not even do it for me. But whenever you see me doing this thing, if you could just help me, it was the laundry. I was like, if you could just yeah. help me do the laundry whenever I'm doing it. I know in some seasons you do that. And some seasons I do all of it. And some seasons you do all of it. And just about realizing that we need to ask for help and not be afraid of people. What are we afraid of? I think, I think we take pride in doing it all because at the end of the day, we can say we did it all. And then we can look at you and point at you and say, what did you do? Mm -hmm. Especially in marriage. It's like, I did this and this and this and this today. What'd you do? And we have many women these days who own businesses, uh, building businesses, who are working jobs. And it wasn't that way for our grandparents. And we're still doing the same amount of work in the household. But we're also expected to do it. And we also expect males to step up. We just expect them. But you, but have you ever asked? Have you ever sat them down? And it's not asking in a way where we're causing a fight or where we're causing a rift because that's not going to get us the result that we're looking for. We're asking in a way where we're we're showing respect and we're honoring them for everything they've done, but we're all also asking for them to give a helping hand and trying to help them realize this is what I have going on. I know you have a lot going on too, and this is a stretch for you as well. But right now, I need 10 minutes to go sit in a closet and breathe. Can you do this? Can you sweep this floor? And at the end of the day, being okay with the fact that the laundry is not going to be folded the way you fold it. Mm -hmm. The, the floor is going to have still have stuff on it most times. And I just remember one time looking at a towel and being like, that is not folded how he pulls it out of the closet every time. Like, I know that is not how. <laughs> now I did say, hey, do you want me to show you um, how I typically do it? It just makes it look a little bit better. Um, that way you can do it this way instead of being like, that looks terrible. What you have done, mm -hmm. that situation is awful. <laughs> and also having grace for the fact that it's still not going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. And he's still not always going to help, even though he said yes. Yeah, I think, I think one thing for, especially for those in a relationship or looking to be in one, is one of the key things that we've learned how to do, if there's ever in a conversation that looks like it's heading south, is we ask a question. What are you looking to get out of this? What's the goal mm -hmm. of the conversation? Because if you don't ask what the goal is, then you just go down this rabbit trail and you're like, well, you know what? The reason why you're getting on to me about the laundry is because your mama's breast stank. 
And (laughs) and then you start going down this rabbit trail, which we've seen happen so much, right? You start pointing out insecurities in the other person that you know is going to hurt them. And then it just becomes a battle of who can hurt hurt the other one most until someone just breaks and gives up. And then you can be crowned the champion, the grandmaster champion of hurting your spouse, (laughs) even though you've got to go to bed with that person, you're living life with that person. What's the goal? And I think that so often you can save a ton of arguments and strong conversations as we've labeled in this conversation is just by asking the question, what are you looking to get out of this conversation? Because if the person said, well, I don't know, I'm just upset that you did blah, 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 blah. It's like, so what are you trying to get out of it? Mm-hmm. And then you're bringing it to a very logical place instead of emotional. Well, I'm upset that you didn't do the laundry. You didn't see that I've done, I'm holding one kid in one hand, trying to run a business with the other. I've got, uh I'm trying to vacuum with a foot, like then you can say, oh, well, I'm, I'm so sorry. I didn't see that, see that you needed that. So what you're really asking for is you're asking for me to help you out around the house. Yes. If you could do that, that'd be great. Yeah. And I think that that's just a major key. If you want to have a stable, good relationship is just being able to, when it starts heading south, ask the question, what are you trying to get out of this conversation? Mm. That, I mean, so much can be solved so much no hurt no no there's no question there's nothing right nothing could be to miss misinterpreted nothing could be mis taken in the wrong space when you just ask simple questions oh gosh dang it this is so good i love one <laughs> i want to say one thing real quick i i love the saying that i, I heard my my wife actually said it you know she said comparison is the thief of happiness mm-hmm. i know it's a, it's a mm-hmm. big one and, and i think to myself dang most of the time, big chunk of the time, it's like when I become in this spiral down or this, man, I feel woe was me. It's because there's a comparison going on. I'm like, but who am I comparing myself to? Right. Mm. And it's just, it doesn't matter. You could, you could be scrolling through something, watching something, look outside and see, oh, wow, look at their outside playing ball together. And I'm sitting inside. Like it happens all the time, but I yeah. love what you guys have both just told us just ask questions don't don't take life so serious all the time pan back take a minute or two call a tv time out like i say and just let's just <laughs> breathe real real fast you know dang this is so good all what right you said about comparison i wanted to touch on because that is another thing that women woo, that's a whole thing that we do and just <laughs> women i think the biggest thing for me is when i'm comparing myself the most is when i'm on social media Mm -hmm. that's easy so if i look at that and i realize am is me comparing myself actually helping make me better like am i looking at this person's instagram saying goals like i'm gonna make this happen this is my ideal uh this is what i'm gonna do to get there or am i looking at it and it just makes me sad and i think most of the time it's social media. Mm-hmm. And if we just, del- it, just delete the app, like it, it sounds so drastic at this point in time in our lives, but just delete the app, do it for a couple of days, see what, how you feel, get back on it for five minutes, set a time limit and, or just don't get up, don't get back on it at all. If that is your place where you compare For me, sometimes I'll just be anxious. Just like the other day, I literally just deleted the app again because I was just starting to get anxious. I was honestly starting to judge people and judge myself. And I was just like, what's the common denominator? And just diagnosing kind of what's going on inside my mind and just realizing social media, delete it. And we're good again. Yeah. And then Mm. what do you fill that time with? Yep. Man, that is so freaking good. I, I, my uh, my our daughter and my son in law they they did um, January actually it was January yeah they did a whole social they call whole so, social media fast they were removed everything off their phone and said for the entire month we're not doing any of that and I think you're it, it it's so good and powerful when you recognize these are my vices the, the these are what will take me down a path that I don't want to limit yourself not saying completely you know go crazy with it, but limit yourself, put a timer on it. I was, I was uh, coaching um, a buddy of mine. He asked me to to coach him and then he's like, what do I do? And I'm like, 
when you get on, you set a timer, 10 minutes. Set the timer, go through, or 15 minutes, right? But when it goes off, you get off, right? Yeah. And, and you only set a timer when you know you're going to get on social media. You're going to set that timer. So when it goes off, you're like, I'm off. And as much as you want to go, oh, I just want to look. No, you train yourself. You create a habit that says, I'm only allowing this much of my life on here. And then other than that, I can go out and breathe. That is so, man, that's so good. Dang, you two are freaking amazing. <laughs> Gosh, dang it. We could come and give you a big old hug. Dang, that's awesome. All right. Got to ask this question before we let you go. Um, what are we up to? What are you guys doing? Let us know how we can all get a hold of you, how we can reach out, connect. Please bring us in your space, what you're doing these days. Yeah. Yeah. The best way to find us is, well, social media, social media, funny yeah. enough, social, social media is one of them. If you want to learn more about who I am and the business that we run with our, the virtual events business that we're in is go to stephenpemberton.com. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for me on any kind of social medias, look for Stephen Pemberton kind of looks like Aquaman and that's probably me. And then for her is Brittany Pemberton and yeah. looks like Brittany Pemberton because she's very unique and that is going to be her. Yeah. And then also like Instagram is mainly the place that I hang out and just add a A in between my name and a K in between his. Yeah. Brittany A. Yeah. Pemberton and Stephen K. Pemberton. Yep. Oh, don't you worry. We'll have all the links. We'll have everything on there. Okay. Don't you worry about that. We will, we will, everybody will know how to get a hold of you uh, at one. You might have to get off Instagram and social media because the amount of inquiries that people are going to reach out to, which is <laughs> which was not a bad thing. All right. As we wrap up this amazing, amazing interview, um, beauty about this, I get to go listen to this multiple times before it actually gets posted is. All right. Let me ask you this question. If you were to see Brittany, we'll start. We'll you go first, and then Steve, you go second. If you were to see your five-year-old self today, what do you think she, and then what do you think he would say to you? Oh man, I think that she would be proud of me because my five-year-old self was very shy, and I still wouldn't call myself. I'm not going to say I'm shy. No, mm -mm. we don't speak anything that we don't want ourselves to be. But I think she would be proud of everything that I've been through, everything that I've overcome. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'll keep thinking while you're talking and see if there's anything else to add. I know when, whenever you pose this question, it, it makes me really emotional because I'm very, I'm a very visual person. So I, I, actually put myself there. I put myself walking into a, a place and there's my five-year-old self. And he's asking me a question where it's, and the thing is, is he's not asking me a question. He's just standing there. And when I see myself, I, and especially in this moment, as she was talking is it's just kneeling down. And if I could just have a, not even a tape recorder, but almost like a, a hologram to show him everything we walked through is I think that it would give my five-year-old self hope. And I hope that the life that he's lived so far, the things that he's seen so far, the things that have pushed him to be who he is in this moment, that everything that he's going to walk through is for a purpose. And everything that he's walking through is actually to give a bigger impact to other people. I want him to look at my life and go, I, I couldn't have even have dreamed of this. With my little pack of crayons, I couldn't have drawn this. <laughs> I want him to understand that every step of the way that no matter what it looks like, he has an understanding that it doesn't always look like this. And that's when I think of that, it makes me really emotional because I just remember what it feels like. If I'm I put myself back into being five, I remember being so repressed basically that I turned myself into an introvert. I actually, I, I labeled myself an introvert for the longest time, but after doing a almost five hour podcast, and I had all the energy in the world afterwards, I realized I may not be an introvert. I actually love people. I love talking to people. I love the opportunity to talk to you and with those of you listening. So I had mislabeled myself for 29 years because of what I went through at the age of five. 
So if I'm able to go back and say, hey, everything that you believe about yourself, hold it with an open hand because that's not who you really are. I would actually be able to shortcut that kid's life by 20 years. At the age of nine, he would live a different life. At the age of 29, he would be a completely different person in a different place, a different state of mind, probably a different level of success. People that he's helped that 29-year-old me at this moment can never imagine just because he was able to go back and speak to a five-year-old him and say, hey, it's okay. There's hope for you. Man, I mean, what more can you say? Thank you. Both of you have been enlightening, inspiring. Man, that's so freaking good. This interview is just, it's going to blow up. And it's because how open and honest and transparent you both have become. We want to say, I mean, me and millions will, you know, thank you. We love you. Thank you so much for not giving up on yourself, mm. not listening to the negativity within, right, between the two ears that you should uh -huh. say, take the easy route. This is the path that everybody takes. It's easier. This route, only the few, the select will go down this route because when you go down this route, it's hard, it's difficult, but you will then inspire other people to go down that same path. Man, that unbelievable Unbel i knew this was going to be good i didn't know it'd be this good but it has been absolutely great before i let you go uh five books i do this all the time i mean five books that you would recommend both of you get to choose five books that you would recommend anybody to read whether it's personal development business um yeah, gospel related spiritual whatever, whatever it may be but give us five books that we can add to all of our collections um, the first one you actually have on your bookshelf for me, the Atomic Habits, the Atomic Habits is oh. probably one of my number ones. And it actually didn't hit Steven the same way it hit me because he's just such a person that pays attention Very to details systematic. and is systematic. But for me, the person who's all over the place, maybe you want to label yourself or someone has labeled you ADHD. I feel like Atomic Habits is a wonderful book for that. Um, another one for me is find your people. Um, that's especially for women. If you have a hard time making friends or don't know, uh, what the purpose of friends would be, or you've gotten hurt in the past, that's great. Uh, two for marriage are going to be the love and respect book, uh, five love languages. We talked a little bit about that earlier. You can actually go take their free tests. I don't know, yeah. probably millions of people have taken that test. Mm -hmm. Um, and the fifth one, let's see. I don't know. Let me look. Yeah, she's got a whole list. I think <laughs> for me, there's a book that hasn't come out yet that I've had the opportunity to read ahead of time. It's called The Uncertainty Solution. That's a really good one because it's packaged, going back to even what we talked about earlier in this podcast, it's packaged as a book for investors, but it's so much more than that. The first four chapters of the book is actually helping you overcome the mindsets about uncertainty and reframing what does uncertainty really look like? What What is it actually research-based that proves that our brains are catered towards seeing a pattern and how oftentimes that pattern doesn't actually equivalent to success. It's just something that we've used to survive. So Uncertainty Solutions is an amazing one. Grace and Truth Paradox, I love that book. Mm -hmm. The The... Pursuit of God is a really good one. That's a both oh, faith. Mm -hmm. Both of those are faith. I would say that the one that I'm reading right now is also really good, which I would suggest is called Exit Without Exiting by Jason Duncan. The fifth one, I'm trying to look at this. I got my fifth one. My okay, fifth, one, fifth one. My fifth one is uh, a really tiny book, and I think it's four dollars anywhere you can buy books, and it's called Praying Circles Around Your Children. And it's a really quick read with really good practical tips, like easy. And it's something that I had never really done before. So that's a, the Atomic Habits. Um, the other one, those are kind of like just regular life to marriage and a kid's one. Yeah. And I would say that my last one, because I'm going to go three spiritual ones, is Rediscovering the Kingdom. Oh, that's, yeah. I think that. Like that is a big book, but if you can get through it, it'll reshape every every aspect of how you think about spirituality. I think that there's just a huge misconception that being someone that is a Christian, that you have to go out here and, and say, oh, you're going to hell if you don't believe what I believe, or mm -hmm. you go, go thumb somebody over the head. Really, 
the way to actually show people that you care, this is also a key in business, is you go on love on them. Mm -hmm. You go and see how can you add value to them. Meet them where they're at. Don't try to change them. Meet them where they're at. So the rediscovering the kingdom is a big one, but those are my five. Yeah. Mm. Those are 10 well, those we, we are going to have, you look, we're going to have all the links. We'll have the links to where you guys can go to the, buy the books um, because this we're just stacking books on top of books. This is this is what we do. We we bring knowledge, we bring peace, we bring joy, we bring hope. And if you don't look after you listen to this, if you don't feel like, man, I've got nothing to complain about, go rewatch it. You've got no pulse and no soul. I, look, I'm sorry, people may not are going to completely disagree with me on that, but I don't care. Like if you <laughs> can't take the young generation, and I, this gives me hope for the younger kids that are coming up. But listen to how they walk through the fire together. They, they they started off young and dumb. Everybody will say you were young and dumb. You got married, right? Yeah. And then you you, you were just this mat, not not a wedge. I'm we're talking about a Grand Canyon separation between the two. <laughs> are trying to figure each other out. And then they finally said, "We're time. It's time to be intentional. It's time to be intentional about who we are with each other." And once they found that. Look, we see, we all get to benefit. We get to enjoy the fruits of their labors, their labors. Go back to the lay, the parable of the labors. The entire time I was thinking about the parable of the labors, God called and he got, he, God came out and said, Hey, look, nine o'clock. I need people to come work the fields. Mm -hmm. Guess who worked the fields? These two did. And then he came back at 12 o'clock, said, I need more people. And then three o'clock came. I need, I need a few more. And then he said, hey, I got an hour's worth of work. I got a little bit more. Who who needs it? And then he went and paid them, right? He went and sat and paid everybody. And the people who who got who came with the hour left and the people who started, these two kids that were in front of me, they're like, well, how come they are getting the same pay that I that, that they're getting paid the same as much as we? Yeah. We've been here since nine. And the labor and, and the master of the field said, Don't tell me how. To judge. Sure. Don't tell me how yeah. to pay my people. You that are at nine o'clock were designed to help those at one hour left because they needed inspiration. You yeah. guys are being all inspired. Everybody globally that is listening to this, you are being inspired by those, these two kids. I can call you kids because I'm a lot older than you. <laughs> <laughs> That at nine o'clock said, we will be, we will go through the pain, the heartache, the trials, the furnace, everything. But at the end, we will say, thank you for following our path. Thank you for listening to us. Thank you for allowing us to serve you by paving a way of a field. So now you can go inspire the world and be, make it a better place. Nice. This, this, this is unbelievable. Guys, like, share, comment, leave a review, share this with people. You see why this is one of the best podcasts that's out there continuing to grow. Last year, top 25% globally. It's because people like Stephen and people like Brittany want to come on and share their experiences and their stories. They just want to do what I want to do, make the world a better place. Leave a legacy. These two are leaving legacies, not now, but generational change. Their kids' kids will look back at this and say, because those my, because my great-great-grandparents chose never to give up, never to follow a cycle, and never to be status quo and choose happiness over comfortability, they are where they are today. Un-freaking-believable. That's beautiful. This was this has been another fantastic episode of the Art Study of You. Until next time, go have a great day. I need to give a shout out to my biggest sponsor, Warrior Energy Drink. The reason why we partner together is because we have the same mindset, we have the same drive. We're we're for the people, we're about the people. Look, Warrior Energy Drink has zero sugar options and they got water as well. Low calories, great taste, very affordable, no crash, big energy fast, high in B vitamins, Awesome, awesome design, culture design, 160 milligrams of caffeine. Other energy drinks have way, way too much, and they're always giving it back to their community. They're paying it forward. Partner with them. Guys, click the link below. Go, go get yourself your own Warrior Energy Drink and go crush today. Hey, everybody. I want to take this quick second here. A lot of you have asked me what journal do I use, my family use. Simple. This journal right here. 
See, my buddy Craig Smith has spent years and years developing a journal that takes everything that's up in here and puts it on paper so we can be edified and grow. So if you don't know what to write about, which oftentimes happens, he gives you ideas. And if you want power statements, things that say, I am this, he gives you those ideas. Now, if when you look at on one page, it says, this is what I accomplished. This is what I am statements. And there's a quote every single day that you get to write on and, and focus on. The second page is write your daily thoughts, get it out of your head, put it on paper to be the best version of yourself. The link's down below. Listen, I get no money for this. It's just, I believe in this journal. I love this journal. It's changed my life, my family's life. And if you want, it'll change your life as well.